In this video, we'll take a look at what I feel are the best settings to get an authentic experience for both Game Boy and Game Boy Color in RetroArch. Let's dive right in. The first thing you'll want to do is go to the online updater and then core downloader in RetroArch. Scroll all the way down until you get to the Nintendo Game Boy cores. Same Boy is the most accurate emulator. It's recommended if you're on a higher end system. If you're on a lower end system, you might want to use Gumbata. To add your ROMs to RetroArch, go down to Import Content in the main menu, select Scan Directory, and then navigate to the location of your ROM folder. Once you find it, select Scan This Directory. Both my Game Boy and Game Boy Color ROMs are in separate folders, so I will scan both. Back in the main menu, I have an entry for both Game Boy and Game Boy Color. I can select a Game Boy game and then run it using the same boy core. To me, this doesn't look the best, so let's spice it up a little bit. We'll do that by using some really good shaders by developer Tatsuya79. And as always, apologies for any mispronunciation. The link for these shaders is in the description below. Once downloaded, you want to navigate to the RetroArch Shaders folder, and then open the zip file and drag the contents of the zip into your Shaders folder. Now back in RetroArch with the Game Boy game open, we want to open the Quick menu, and then we're going to scroll all the way down to Shaders. You want to make sure video shaders are turned on, then go to load. Choose the handheld border folder, and we're going to load up the GB DMG shader. And here's the result. It looks pretty darn good, but there's a few other things that we can tweak as well in the shader settings that you might want to be aware of. But back in the shader menu, if we go to shader parameters, there's a number of options here, but a couple I'll draw attention to. Number one is the LCD response time. The higher you crank this number, the greater the ghosting effect will be on the image. Let me show you what that is. Notice now how there's a little bit of blurring as Mario moves across the screen. You would experience this if you were playing on original hardware, so the LCD ghosting effect seeks to emulate that. Pretty cool. Now my personal preference is to turn it off because it gives me a headache, but it's something you might want to use. Another option you'll likely want to make use of is the image scale. This allows you to zoom in or out and find an image size that's comfortable for you. There is also a shader available for Game Boy Color games, and we follow the same procedure we just go into shaders from the quick menu. This time, however, we will load the GB color shader. And this also looks fantastic. And the same LCD ghosting and scale options are also available if you want to tweak those. Now, in all honesty, I wish I could still play these retro games on original Game Boy hardware, but it's becoming harder to come by. And not only that, my aging eyes really struggle to see these smaller screens. So I'm really grateful that we can come very close to replicating the original visual experience on a bigger screen. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you enjoy this type of content, please consider giving this video a like, and maybe even subscribing to the channel. Until next time, happy gaming my friends.